Here we fucking go, dude. After oh, half an hour of technical issues, we finally got us started. We did. We got you that Peroni. Mm-hmm. Whatever this little seltzer is. Sel- seltzer. Cheers to it. Cheers. I almost cheers you with the with the mic. <laughs> you do that. Oh, mic tap. Hell fucking yeah, dude. Where do we begin, Josh? We have a lot. We have a lot to unpack. Yes, we do. A long history. You are the first and probably only co-worker that I would imagine at this point in my life. I'd be like, hey, come on to my podcast, please. I need to talk to you about. I'll be like, oh, hell yeah. That's it. Let's do right? diabolical shit. Oh, my God. All right. Um, you started before me at our company. Which, which we will not. Which we, won't, we won't mention. But you started before me. What what happened before I I I like made your work life just infinitely better? Hmm. Like so what was I your say, for anybody trying to get into entertainment? It is a wild place. Uh, we were in the agency side of the business, and going into it, I knew I always wanted to be an agent, and I started during COVID. So for the first three months, I was working from home at my house in New Jersey, just trying to learn everything. Finally get to the office in early 22 and then just trying to get everyone's names, know each other. And yeah, just see the coworkers, the environment. And then this guy comes along after in the New York office and our two bosses, mine in LA, his New York worked very closely together. And we realized, oh, this dude's chill. And basically you take it from there. And if if there's anything I've learned, work at a company with young, good looking and like minded people, because that's where you'll make your friends in your late 20s. And that's where you will do everything from then on after. Yeah, that's facts. Honestly, I was most my favorite part about that. The whole gig was the people that I met the people, especially the people that were at my level, like our other our mail mail. I'm so glad that I started in you didn't start in the mail room. I was in the mail room for two days. And on my third day, I interviewed for my boss and got the job. And I remember the day I started, the article came out where he was one of the 40 under 40. And I was like, oh, shit, I'm working for uh, like a good dude. And then cut to two and a half years later, I found out he's the most hated guy at our company. Damn. Shit, bro. You were in the mailroom for eight months and 28 days less than I was in the mailroom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I saw a little more of the mailroom. You know, I'd like to consider myself a real uh, veteran of the mailroom and I'll always wear that patch on my shoulder, honestly. Oh yeah. No, the shit goes down in the mailroom and you will hear gossip that you've never heard before. What I love about the room is that like, it's, it feels like a high school class, but it's also like gnarly that there's no windows in the middle. Even have you seen the New York mailroom? I actually have. It's, actually, yes. it's just like the LA one. There's it's never the LA one is I wore it's actually even more of a like literal mail. Like we get the mail, but like that one in LA yeah. is like there's a separate floater and like actual mail mail. I remember mm-hmm. when I was in, I did the internship in the LA office, and they oh, had I didn't me. Realize you were an intern there. I was. Yeah, that's how I. That's how it all kind of unraveled. You know, I was like, oh, this like. This is, seems kind of interesting. Like, oh, like I didn't really even watch Entourage. I think that's like a thing that gives people the idea of the mailroom. But I saw that my sister did it at another agency. And she oh, was like in the trainee program, like a bigger agency, like different department. So I even heard about all this stuff. Was about- it one of the three lettered ones? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was one of the three lettered ones. And I was like, oh, like I could do this. Like, does that it wasn't something that was like big at my school to go work at an agency. And I was like, let's fucking go. The summer, it was sick, honestly. The summer was a blast. I was like, oh, you get act. Like, I, I when you start recognizing actors from shows, you're like, oh, like I'm in. Like, mm. I'm in the fucking. Wait, how did you like decide that you wanted to do that? No joke entourage because I, so I went to Rutgers in New Jersey and all my friends were the finance bros. I got to work on wall street, a hedge fund, this and that. I was like, dude, like I am not interested in finance. I suck at it, but I thought, Oh fuck it. I'm, I'll do it. Cause everyone else wants to. And then no joke, my roommate sophomore year, shout out to Kev Sev. Uh, he showed me the show called entourage and I fucking binge watched it. And I was like, no, I never wanted to be an actor, but I always thought about like, what does a producer do? As a manager do, and I was like an agent. I want to be that guy. So I worked my ass off for unpaid internships, 
the most I ever got paid for an internship with, with, uh, was either school credit or a $50 stipend a day coming, taking an hour train into New York City, trying to do all that shit just to work my way up to eventually get into the agency we were in. And now I'm at another one and then hopefully one of the even bigger three letter ones. And if I don't make it, I at least go out on top. And we're all, we're all moving around in our, in our <laughs> own way. Like it's, it's just kind of how it goes. Like you, yeah, honestly, like I always felt like the first, I didn't know what to expect going into the first job. I was like, Oh, this is like it. Like, this is the only thing that like the only thing I'm going to do for the like, foreseeable future like you don't like you and thousands of other people to that and then after you're like fucking this oh my god the the way that i got my desk was like not it was not as smooth and as uh as wonderful as your pro i'm happy that that happened to you i'm actually glad that you didn't have to do that i was in there in that like no window room waiting for an interview i got an interview and then i didn't get it and then two weeks later, that assistant that got hired quit. I remember that. Oh, so you I worked fucking, with her. I His name will not be mentioned, but you worked with her. Yeah. So yeah. So there was an assistant before him. She was amazing. Decides to come into our LA office because one of the senior partners was like, I like her. Come to LA and work for me. But she was too much for him to handle because fuck him. And she was doing her job great. So he, she eventually got canned out of the company. But then this other girl came on. And literally it was like, I remember two weeks and I'd be like, Hey, can you do this? Can you do that? She's like, I have no idea what I'm doing. And all of a sudden this guy comes <laughs> on and it's much smoother. Yeah. The thing was that I actually, so I interviewed for that, like I said, and then two weeks later, I just get like a random call from the former, former HR guy. Like, yeah, there's always a four, there's multiple former HR. We were there. For, I was there for two years. And there were so many HR people that I'm like, Oh yeah, that guy called me. Mm -hmm. I get on the phone and they're like, the agent's like, all right. I don't know if this is gonna work out. And I was like, wait, what? She's like, we're gonna do a test trial. So I was doing a test trial on Zoom for like a week. And then she was like, All right, like we never like confirmed it, but like I never said, like, oh, was, uh, like, and you wanna hire me? Like, is this full time? Yeah. He was just like, All right, you're on. Yeah, four months later. So am I still hired? I was like, I don't care, but just, just to get our work done. Oh my God, dude. That was fucking. Yeah. But I will say with that mailroom. So after a while, um, I was on the, our boss's desk. So I was on that guy's desk. Strikes happen. Come back after the strikes, get on the senior partner's desk, pissed him off because I raised the fist when he was being cranky. And then I kind of got shit canned, not from the company, but from his desk. So I went back to the mailroom, knew I wasn't going to have a feature at the company. So I started looking and dude, I was the worst floater slash mailroom person. <laughs> because they're like, can you do this? I was like, sure. And I just didn't care to do it. I knew they like technically couldn't fire me right there. And so everyone hated me. But also when you ripped a fart in that room, everybody, everybody <laughs> knew. And when it's like these like young, like cute USC, UCLA girls that are bright and bushy eyed, ready to go. I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking doing that. Like you're going to live with this. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a different life. Welcome to entertainment. Here's yeah. a real fart. <laughs> Suck it up. You're going to cry. Yeah. <laughs> Farts are here to stay in this mailroom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got I to gotta ask, though, were there any fun firing stories from the New York office? Um, Me with, like, so my first desk. No, it wasn't anything, like, it wasn't anything dramatic, honestly, that happened, honestly. Now that I think about it, like, I'm most excited about your story of like, hey, wait, how did you phrase it? You raised, you're like, yeah, I raised a fist. <laughs> wait, what was it again? I raised the fist where you try to like, I was giving him paper. He was yelling at me. I was like, you don't have time to yell. You have a meeting with a big client. Like stop, like throwing a tantrum. I laid everything out for you. Take a breath and do that. And as I'm giving it to him something, he tries to rip it out of my hand. I don't let go. And he's getting in my face and I raised the fist to him. I go like, sit down and listen. And he didn't like that. He went right to HR and canned me off his desk. That's wait. Did you see any dose of fear in his eyes? Did you, did it oh, like, yeah. like, it was like, yeah, because he likes his assistants to literally be like his last one would be like, you know what? Fuck you. Can you just let me do my work? And then that's what it would do. And it's like, look, I'm a Jersey dude. I've, if I'm pissed, I will get in your face and get pissed. But I'd rather not do that in the office. I don't want to be angry 24-7. I don't like, because when I yell, I know it's hard for me to stop and I'm on a roll. 
So it's like, I just want to get my work done, do it the best I can. And that just brought it out of me. Technically, that was like the 15th time I was fired, though, because you'd be <laughs> like, if you don't get this done by the morning, like you're off my desk. I'm like, cool, let's see what happens. <laughs> Sometimes I just wouldn't do it and be like, all right, all right. And nothing, nothing would come of it. And it's like the one time where I raise my fist and boom, you're off. So apparently you could say whatever you want, but you can't do anything physical. Yeah, honestly, like, dude, you stood up to the guy. Like, has that anything remotely close to that ha happened in his tenure? Probably, probably not. Uh, I feel like, yes like, yes like, no. like the like, way a famous I chicken story, but wait, what? Oh, you don't know? About I don't this? know. This is I don't know the chicken story. Three wide story, and I've heard a few different forms of it, but. This is what I heard from the guy before me who straight up asked him what happened with it. So this is when he, before he was at the company. The senior agent. that you're, Yeah, the senior you... agent. I actually know. I think it was. So he left the big agency to go to the one that we worked for. And our head of department who's still there, he was this guy's assistant back in the 80s, 90s. And one day he's just, you know, at the desk. My boss, former boss, was eating a rotisserie chicken. And he's like says the name, hey, make this call, do this. And the assistant doesn't react, just keeps doing his thing. So he takes the chicken, eats it at the back of his head. Guy doesn't react at all. And then he does, my ex-boss did not like that. So he picks the chicken up off the ground, smushes it into the back of his hair and starts smiling. And the guy calmly stands up, pins him against the wall, and starts choking him with his own tie. And our other co-head of the department in L.A. stopped and was like, dude, calm down. He goes, if you ever do something like that to me again, to the ex-boss, he goes, I will fucking bury you or no one will find you. Went home, took a shower, came back like nothing happened. Wow. And then he's like, finally, somebody had the balls to stand up to me. And now he's the head of our fucking department. So that is what entertainment is like. Not so much in 2024, but you still have the old heads who feel like it is. You just got to put them in your place at the right time when you know you're doing the good work what do you like what generally like i could tell like that experience at the agency is like a place where you learn to like either like take the shit or like stand up for yourself kind of so like how do, you, how do you think that's like affected other parts of is it was that something that you knew to do before to like stand up for yourself so i always like i read a lot of books um i think there's one just called mailroom coming when you're just like trying to get into the business so i read every possible thing i'm a very personable dude but and since I've been at smaller agencies before as receptionists, management places, as interns, to like some of the executives, I was just so thankful to be at our job that I wanted to learn everything. I wasn't going to talk back. I just wanted to learn how to do the job. And already in my first or like maybe third or fourth day, I made a big mistake, but I never met my boss in person until maybe five months in on the job. So it definitely created, I, th I think, a strain uh, where if you need meet someone in person where you kind of get more of a sense. And even after a year and a half, I just never stood up because I just always wanted him to like me. That was like, I should have thrown it back more. But even the person who replaced me talks back to my ex boss more than I ever did. And he just puts her right in her place. And she's like, I fucking hate him. Da, da, da. It's like, yeah, that it sucks. You just got to learn to take the shit and deal with it in a healthy way. Because I've had times where I have come home gone to the gym and one time I tried to do boxing and I was so mad I threw a dumbbell at the mirror at my apartment gym cracked the mirror punched the like the, the wipe dispenser off the wall like it can get to you you have to find a good coping mechanism that isn't drugs or violence that's facts dude it, it's it it will get it'll get to your emotions easily like I've Bro, you took it on the you took it out on the whites, bro. Fuck those yeah. whites, bro. And what's what's funny too is I remember one day I accidentally threw you under the bus because I don't know <laughs> everyone. We share the same birthday, December eighth. We, oh yeah, we, we fucking do, do yeah. dude. And one time, <laughs> so like I, it's it's our birthdays and we're at work, and his boss is like. I guess like Trevor took off for his birthday. I was oh like, my God, I did that. Well, yeah. And I was like, wait, it's his birthday today. It's my birthday today too. And she calls me and she goes, see a good assistant over email. A good assistant doesn't take off for their birthday. Right, Trevor. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> wait, no, like, that's damn. so funny. That's awesome. That, 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 that phone call. I had no idea because she was pissed that I took my, first of all, I was on the desk for like nine months at that point. I never took a sick day. 
actually like this is not great because like i was like sick at a certain point but like i cared so much about the work and not missing it i was like like i gotta be there like i gotta it wasn't like i was i had like some sniffles it was like a cold mm -hmm. and i was like all right like now i gotta show up like it's like with anything else and like I would rarely miss class or like, I would never miss a game if I was like, oh, I'm sick. Like, unless I was at like a serious illness, but like, I, I'm not like, oh, I'm going to miss this. So I would go for like everything. I didn't take it. I was actually scared to use my vacation time. Isn't that the, the type of thing? Yeah. Isn't that a wild thing that it's out there? But like, there are probably so many people and all over the place that are like, I'm Just nervous. The to same way. Right. I didn't plan one and I didn't go anywhere for 10. Not that it like, is a disaster like it's fine i was in new york city at a job that's fine but like i didn't i didn't even consider go i didn't consider going anywhere because i was like no like this will be met with so much opposition and then on my birthday i was like you know what it's my fuck, birthday like, it's my it. and i was like i just want to have a great day i just want to have a good day i just want to be happy so i told her i'm gonna take a vacation day on my birthday like in advance, like appropriate, you know, with an appropriate notice. And I was like, and you know, <laughs> I went to lunch with my siblings at a restaurant, literally a block from the office. <laughs> yeah, yeah I literally went, got my favorite chicken sandwich at Hillstone. Have you ever been to Hillstone? I have. Dude, dude, great place. The Dings Chicken Sandwich. Shout out Hillstone and all the brands. Very clever what they do, by the way, where they change the names of their restaurants and keep the same menu, but change the name so they don't have to put the calories on the menu. Mm -hmm. Damn right. But uh, one one thing going off that I will say, not the chicken stuff, uh, <laughs> is anyone entering like their first serious career job for the first year, like you will, like you want to learn as much as you can. You want to stand out, but no matter how loyal you are to a company, they will not be loyal back because I would have actually killed for this company I was at. And in the end, because I pissed off some cranky dude, then it like all went to shit. The two, just over two and a half years of me like working my ass off, like doing things like other assistants didn't like didn't do, getting bookings for clients. That's like it all just because of one bad day ruined all of that. And even though I remember the first in the first year, the one day I took off was to go to my sister's graduation. And even though I was on vacation, I was still I remember in the hallway of a small hall hotel in Temple University in Philly, where my sister sister graduated, and my boss yelling at me, my grandfather's getting wheeled into an ambulance because he fainted from heat stroke, and I'm getting yelled at on my boss on my day off because I didn't do something right. Because and it's like, what the fuck am I doing? And I still like didn't talk back to him after that, and that's one of my regrets. I like I could have just said, you know what, fuck you. Like I'm taking the time. How about like I'm on vacation, so you can't do anything about it. Seriously, if anybody does that, like it will not be on you. And it's scary to yell back for the first time. But once you do that, it is liberating. And I will say any job I go in, like I, I learned a lot from it. Any job I go into the future now, I will be loyal, but I'm not going to be scared to use vacation days. And you just have to do you. Don't put sacrifice your health or your time for a job that will not have your back in the end. So facts, honestly, like I think in these first few years of working learning what you what you're like don't think is a good fit is more important than being like oh this is the exact thing i'm gonna do for the rest of the Ex exactly and also the part about having the like sounds kind of cliche but like courage to quit or move on because mm -hmm. you know it's not a good fit is also such an important thing that early on because there are so many people who like will say oh i i hate this like i'm out i want to go but like, I can't because and I was thinking a lot of those things too, for a while. I was like, oh, there, this is going to happen. I was making up scenarios about what I thought would happen to oh me and my how God. it would affect They're my future. The, yeah. The but same that's thing. classic, right? That you need to anticipate that, oh, this, because it's so interconnected and everyone knows yeah. everyone. Or it's like, that, the, what, like you're in the shower and your boss is going to be like, you think a scenario is going to happen. You're, it's like, if my boss says this, this is exactly what I'm going to say. But they never end up saying it. And, and you, don't say, that you don't get a chance to say it to them. I'm like, <laughs> like you're looking in the mirror like, no, no. like, yeah, that's going to happen. But it, it's definitely not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Dude, my second, like, my tenure on the second desk uh, was like a little, it was a very different tenure. But uh, it wasn't like, the. you know how I, I would just get shit for like stuff that I do on the first desk. And it'd be like, okay, like, get along. 
whatever. Like, we'll move on from it. I just took shit. This second desk that I was on, you know, who's, you remember whose desk I was on? Initials. And I heard that he had treated the previous assistant pretty poorly. He was like, and it was something from the other assistants too, where like he would get berated in front of the other assistants out in the open, you know, like one of those types of scenarios. And I was like, I was like, that's like, he, it didn't seem like something he deserved. I was like, he's, he's like a sharp dude. He went to like this really good fucking school. Like dude went to Princeton. I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, the Princeton. I was like, he's doing the job. Like he's doing the work. He's sending me like, there's no way he's not like doing that. And I was like, why is he taking so much heat? I was like, maybe it's something he really did. Like maybe there was some really deep seated issue. And I was like, I'll look past that because this, this agent asked me to work for him personally. He's like, I want you to come work for me now. You know, a little, a little poach, a little poach move. I was like, this is kind of cool. I felt like, mm-hmm. I felt like an athlete. I felt like I was in the transfer portal, kind of. And they're like, come on over to the SEC, dude. Like, come on, play some big, you know, big time ball. And I was like, all right, sounds good. So I just like took it. I just literally took it. And I was like, sounds good. And then like, I sort of got like ripped shreds pretty <laughs> quickly. Like, I was yeah. like, ah, you know what? The grass is not always greener. It is not. You think it is. But that's another thing about doing these jobs early on is that you're like, oh, if I make this move, oh, it's, it's going to be way better just because i hated this one. Oh, this is automatically just going to solve all the problems yeah no <laughs> that's the thing it's such a like nothing in hollywood like i even for an actor the career is a roller coaster where it's like they can get three even three or four huge movies tv shows that then stale for two years and it comes back up da, da, da. but maybe the peak won't ever be as high so you're kind of just going like that but with everything else like we've there is an assistant who their boss was not as high as our bosses, just a younger agent. And he was only there for maybe like a year, two months and change. And he went directly from that to being a creative executive at a production company. It's a huge leap if you know anything about it. And it's like, now we're struggling just to get other assistant jobs at other places. And it's like, everyone has their own timeline of where they're going. And even for me, like I went from one working for like two and a half years. Now I'm at another agency working for a senior partner and we'll see. And then I might be going to another one, but for a lower level guy who is basically on the same level as my first boss when I started, but doing, you know, but it's just a bit better name. So you never know where it's going to go. You never know where like you think you're going to do a career jump, but it maybe just actually like brings you back like a year from where you were, but you're just at a better place with a better name. And Names and the bosses, that's what count. It's you're only as good as your boss and how much your boss helps you. That's good. Yeah. That's that's another thing too I noticed is that they the agents really felt that their assistant was a reflection of you know themselves and their office. So I understood that mm-hmm. in that regard. I was like, okay, I get it. If this thing doesn't get sent out, it's like from you and it's on your behalf, kind of, but like <laughs> yeah. You know, we're gonna we're gonna live. The clients, the the actors, the actors will live. Like they, they'll they be okay. Live. They sound. It always seems like there's some disaster going on. Yeah, and then, but it's like every disaster you get into, it's like it almost happens, but it never does. Like you always skirt it at the last second. And even so, this, I always hated when people told me this. It's like, hey, you're in Hollywood. You're not like we're not doctors. We're not curing cancer. But it's like, dude, my job's on the line. Like we're doing this big thing that might be like a few hundred thousand dollars, like a, maybe a million or $2 deal. And it's like, if I don't send this, like it could potentially drop da, da, da. So it's like, you do have a lot of pressure and, but just on top of like, you know, if your boss is a good leader or not, what they do, how they treat you and all that. And even when I started on my bosses, as I remember, it was November 1st of 2021. And even though it was only like a month or two, didn't get any bonus that year. The next year, I got a $500 bonus where everyone else got like a thousand or two. And then the next year got nothing. And it's like, I then like, it sucks. You have to understand who you're working for. And if you understand you're working for someone shitty, be shitty back. It's like they, you can get fired for not doing your work, but do enough where you won't be and be like, Hey, I'm only going to like the way you treat me. I know I'm good at my job. Now, once you learn it, fire it back. Yeah. Yeah. It's all you can do. I feel that. So wait, what was Rutgers like? I want to know. Dude, if you like know. football, Italians, partying, and crazy nonsense, that's where you want to go. 
Yeah. I yeah. know you're a Shout out to the Scarlet Knights. Yeah. Hoorah. You're you're Jersey native, right? Oh yeah. Born, Born you, and raised Nor- in Sopranos town. Hell yeah. Oh, is, so is that Taylor Ham or Pork Roll? What's your it's choice? Taylor Ham. Is it is that, North, is that North Jersey? That's North Jersey. Pork Roll is south, but there's they're a little crazy down there, so it's Taylor Ham. Yeah, I was I was in Philly. For, I lived in Philly for a couple of years, so I was close. I was I was like it was Jersey Philly for me. Like for like we weren't going into Jersey too much, but like I know Jersey. I was I was I was taking that route to Benihana and Sherry, mm. Jersey. You know, like we take across the bridge, we'll go to some concert or something like that over there. Like, dude, I fucking miss like Philly, Jersey, like that kind of energy. We got the energy, and it's just, honestly, everyone will tell you. What somebody said this to me last week, and I don't think it has been summed up better. LA is a sunny place for shady people. Ooh, Ooh but okay. Jersey, it's like it's just like, hey, fuck you, get out of here. You pay for your sandwich, good. Like that's that's like a I love you, goodbye. Yeah, and like that's just how it is. Like goddamn, I miss the seasons and the weather. Right. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it, I think there's like just more of a sense of normalcy out there because like. I mean, New York is like you, you're getting a lot of shit thrown at you, New York, whatever. Like people from all over, but like you, Jersey, Philly, like I think people are more honest and just more themselves out mm-hmm. here. There's like, it, I, I imagine a lot of people are moving here for like other. There, I don't know how to even articulate it, but like the re- the reasons aren't probably as pure as someone who are who's just like living in their hometown or exactly. staying, staying in the place where they grew up kind of that area like someone's making some huge trek and they got some ulterior ulterior motives maybe is probably the like the the thing that we see out here yeah i don't know what is there something you've noticed about people who have just like who aren't i mean like if you're moving here for like the right reasons like i can tell like with what you're going for in your career your job like you are coming to the right place to do that but like you probably see the shadiness of other people who aren't kind of giving mm. that like kind of that yeah though well the one thing i will say is and it's not even for entertainment it's just any job you have it's you can within the first year or two tell if someone's using you just kind of to get something out of you or something you're associated with i will never forget we go out one night i have a friend who is a manager at a pretty good management company and we go out with some of his friends and one of his actress friends come over and then yeah, we're hitting it off being like a little flirty but nothing like to go home about and then all like, and we're just like maybe texting over the next month or two, boom, Sundance comes around and she goes there and she goes to our company's private Sundance party and asked, Oh, Hey, like, do you know, Josh, can I get in? <laughs> and luckily one of the younger agents was there was like, dude, a girl is asking like, who is she? I was like, Oh my God. And I called her up. I was like, don't ask my name. I'm an assistant. I don't know anyone that will come back on me. And she thought, oh, because I work at an agency, I could get into this Sundance party that if I went, I could probably just barely get into. So it's like people will just use you for things and you'll have a lot of fake friends, but you'll also make a lot of real ones. And that's the shit where you get like, and you'll know the real ones because that's when you do diabolical shit. You're like, never speak of this again. I got you. (laughs) Hell fucking yeah. 